through the centuries, the great Nile River, a mighty stream in the desert that has brought life and blessing to countless generations from the time of the ancient pharaohs until the present day. Ships and sails have changed little since the infant Moses was rescued from this river by the daughter of a king. Upon these same waters, in her royal barge, sailed Queen Cleopatra, seeking conquest in love and empire. Countless millions more have sailed on and on into eternity. Steeped in the mists of antiquity and fabled in story and song, here are scenes where millions have lived and worked and dreamed and passed away. Upon these ancient monuments gaze the eyes of Moses, who was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Living nearby in the royal palace, he grew up a prince of the realm, then abandoned it all to serve the living God. Not far from this spot, the young child Jesus walked with his mother, Mary, and with Joseph. The ancient pyramids and the silent sphinx stand guard through the centuries as generations pass on in the great parade of life and destiny. Today, as in ancient times, the rich live in magnificent homes on the banks of the Nile. Attractive architecture and beautiful buildings adorn the face of modern Cairo. With a heritage so rich, Egypt today must be a paradise on earth. But human wisdom has produced no paradise, not even in Egypt. In the pushing, surging throng, the struggle for existence goes ever on as each man strives to gain the necessities for food and clothing, survival for body and soul. In the villages of Egypt, life has changed little with the passing centuries. Daily problems are simple and real. A familiar scene provides a glimpse into the past as the faithful camel bears his masters onward toward tomorrow. Driving their goats along a dusty camel trail, children follow the footsteps of ancestors gone before. Is it true when they say, no man cares for my soul? Here are young hearts that wait for the message of light and happiness, of truth and peace. Since the cry of baby Moses long ago, the need of helpless children has always touched the heart of God. Precious souls, loved by the Savior of the world, are there none who care as they pass by? From God himself comes a word of hope. I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cry. I am come down to deliver them. Lillian Trasher answered the call of God to become mother to the homeless children of Egypt. She began with one child, a willing heart, great patience, warm love, and a determined faith and hope in Christ. For nearly half a century, she gave herself unsparingly to care for the little ones so greatly loved of God. No task was too menial, too humble for this courageous woman. Unsung and almost unknown for years, she worked with her hands to build a home for the homeless beside the River Nile. Consecrated hands, dedicated hands. New faces came to the orphanage, which grew and survived despite many disappointments and heartbreaks and great financial strain as more and more babies came to be fed and nourished. From all over Egypt, the homeless and unwanted were brought to Mama Lillian. The orphanage grew and grew and grew. One hundred, three hundred, five hundred. No helpless child that God brought to the orphanage doors has ever been refused. Today, after nearly half a century of divine providence and care, there are nearly 900 residents at the orphanage in Asiut, Egypt. Nile mother indeed. What is the secret of the orphanage? 
How did this wonder happen? What is the key to its survival and growth? We invite Lillian Trasher to speak for herself. The orphanage is a testimony of the love and faithfulness of God. Every day we live over again the miracle of the loaves and fishes. For 45 years, I've never turned away a child that I felt should be in the orphanage. Oh, it's wonderful to trust God and to trust him for the care of all these children. If you could only see the miraculous change that comes into their broken lives when they contact Christian love. Oh, I'd rather do this work than anything else in all the world, taking care of the babies of Egypt. Down through the years, people around the globe have helped the Nile mother to feed and care for her family of orphans. More than $1,000 a month is required to buy flour alone. Homeless and destitute widows, who often experience much hardship and suffering in the Near East, serve at the orphanage in humble gratitude. They have baked the bread and washed the clothes for a multitude of little ones and done other chores familiar to a great children's home. Even in this modern age, the corn of Egypt is providing bread for hundreds who lift their faces in faith to God. More than 900 feed daily at the table which Lillian Trasher has spread in the wilderness by the grace of God. Imagine the responsibility she carries in her heart. Perhaps your gift put food in these children's mouths. Young hearts filled with thanks to their Heavenly Father, chosen by God to receive hope and grace at the orphanage. From the very beginning, Miss Trasher has insisted on a vigorous program of practical education. The orphanage schools are graded by age groups and rate among the very best in all Egypt. Wendell Wilkie was impressed with these schools. He found nothing to compare with them in all the Near East. The older girls are personally trained by Miss Trasher and prepared to help instruct the younger children at the orphanage. Miss Trasher explains, we are trying to produce Christian character that will stand the test of time. A healthy body, a clean heart, and a trained mind. The amazing Mama Lillian often writes many of her own textbooks and has English classes that begin at 6.30 in the morning. The heart of Egypt can be reached and blessed through the lives of her orphan children. Proof of the quality of orphanage training is demonstrated in the life of Mina Gurgis. Brought to the home as an orphan boy, he was not ungrateful. Truly born again, and carefully trained, he continues on today as supervisor of the Egyptian workers. He's like my own son, Miss Trasher declares. Early morning, 4.30 or 5 o'clock, often finds Mama Lillian at her desk preparing lessons or personally answering letters to people all around the world who help to care for the children. Philip Crouch, third generation missionary to Egypt, came to the orphanage several years ago to serve as Miss Trasher's assistant. Besides his ministry of the gospel, he handles much of the correspondence with those who aid this great children's home. Hazel Crouch, wife of Philip Crouch, takes a keen personal interest in the spiritual welfare of the widows who live and serve at the orphanage. Special time is set aside when these women may gather to study the Word of God and join in group prayer. Many of these women have suffered great personal tragedy. Their loyalty and love are a great blessing to the orphanage as they labor to care for the children. Today, most of them know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Wash day is every day at the orphanage, and again the faithful widows serve gathering baskets of clothes as quickly as they dry. In a family like this, there are no spare changes of wardrobe. It seems that there are never enough clothes for all the hundreds of little ones. Willing hands of older girls 
labor to repair the used garments and make them last as long as possible. Every economy is put into effect. The older girls operate a battery of ancient sewing machines which hum with activity many hours every week. They make shirts and pants for the boys, dresses of all descriptions for the smaller children. These are happy, busy girls learning to take their places in life. Each one is glad to do her share of work in the home that has so greatly changed and transformed her life. Clothes are not the only things that wear out and have to be repaired. Busy feet of nearly a thousand children are mighty hard on shoes. The shoemaker, he came as an orphan boy and remained to serve. Three little girls with old and battered shoes, which are their only earthly possession. No child at the orphanage owns the clothes on its back, only the shoes. These homemade beds have served several generations of the past, but with a bit of repair, they can be fixed up to serve several more. Among the many tasks handled by the widows is the care and upkeep of bedding for the entire orphanage. Mattresses will wear out and have to be repaired from time to time. There's only one thing to do with a big hole in a mattress, and that is to fill it up. This is one bedroom in the boys' wing of the big home. For economy, there are mattress covers, but no sheets. Clean, simple beds, sterilized at regular times. The children's hospital was a gift of Mrs. Jenny Benton, Miss Trasher's sister. It provides a place where suffering children receive expert care. Older girls serve as nurses to help the little ones who need special attention. Dangerous infections and ailments are checked by government doctors who have regular visiting days at the orphanage, who freely give of their time to help the children kind Egyptian doctors moved by human compassion. Special formulas tested in the feeding of hundreds of babies have been carefully developed. Someday, God will look at the hands of Lillian Trasher. She personally supervises the feeding of all infants and every bottle must be just right. At this age, there is nothing to compare with a good bottle of milk. Thank you, Mama Lillian. Just watch me grow. With hundreds of children and so many tiny infants to be fed, Miss Trasher prayed for cows, and God provided. The cows were given to the orphanage, and the herd multiplied. A little girl and a pet cow make a nice picture in any land. Cows make a friendly pet if you don't get too close Contented cow, contented orphan. If you visit the orphanage, you may stand with the children and watch the camels go by with a big load of corn stalks. This is a children's world, and these girls rest from play and shoo away the flies which are still a plague in Egypt today. Heads covered by scarves are in treatment for a dangerous scalp infection that may kill all the hair. On very special occasions, some kind friend provides candy for the children. And what a scramble as mama passes it out. Little hands reaching out to the Nile mother for candy, for a chance, for life itself. The orphanage is a fountain of waters in a dry and thirsty land. Even a cup of cold water in his name has its promise of heaven's reward. No longer homeless, fearful and unwanted, hundreds like this happy, bright-eyed girl, salvaged for Jesus, will be jewels for the master's crown. Sunset falls across the River Nile. Time for orphanage children to prepare for bed. Because of so many children at the orphanage, little girls must go to bed with their dresses on. 
Mama Trasher has no money to spend for the luxury of nightgowns or pajamas in a family so large. One of the older girls reads a Bible story to these subjects of God's grace, gathered in from the highways and the byways, rescued from want to find favor with God, to have a clean bed and hope for tomorrow, to have personal knowledge of Jesus Christ, who gave himself that children like these might not perish, but have everlasting life. Of such is the kingdom of God, a good night prayer from two small girls who can appreciate the meaning of home. Thank you, dear Jesus. Bless Mama Trasher and all the good people who help the orphanage. Sleep on, little ones, and take your rest in safety and peace. God sent a mother to build you a home and will himself stand guard over your souls through the darkest hours of the night. All the great problems of caring for hundreds at the orphanage must wait for a while as one little girl's hair gets personal attention from Mama. Tangled hair, tangled lives. Both must be carefully dealt with and straightened out. A visit with Mama is a happy occasion for the child who can find her alone. They come to see her about weighty personal affairs. A bit of love, a kiss, and a hug can solve almost any problem. Pretty girls and pretty flowers go together at the orphanage. How happy these are that someone really loves them. Where Mama goes, well, there's often a parade of toddlers, little ones out for a walk. Their Heavenly Father watches over these orphans and even provides an armed guard to patrol the gates of the children's home. A good-natured Egyptian youth, very proud of his job. Saturday night at the orphanage is just like Saturday night at your house. Only there are a few hundred extra boys lined up and ready for the shower bath. With so many boys, good discipline is needed to avert a traffic jam. But the assembly line system works out just fine. Clothes pile up at the doorway as lively young feet scurry on. No small boy at the orphanage owns the clothes on his back. Their garments are all community property, issued fresh and clean after each washing, good for as long as they last. Over your head, one, two, three, and a lot of carefree boys are all dressed up and alert for what's ahead. Boys on the fence, maybe not so pretty as the girls, but grateful to God and all ready for church. It was a burning passion to see lost souls saved and truly brought to Christ that drew Lillian Trasher to Egypt. The Word of God and Christian training are on the daily schedule. Here at the Clark Memorial Church, gift of an aged saint, the family gathers for Sunday worship. In most of these lives, God has wrought mighty works of grace. Many have come from tragic backgrounds, violence and despair to find Christ and hope at the orphanage. Three men on the platform who help Mama, the orphanage pastor in his red fez, Nina and Philip Crouch. For nearly half a century, Lillian Trasher has carried on salvaging souls for Jesus. Her message and her life have combined to touch and influence thousands of immortal souls. Quiet time is shared with her sister, Mrs. Jenny Benton, frequent visitor and constant loyal friend to the children's home. 
inner strength drawn from the word of God and sustained by devout private prayer has carried Lillian through every emergency brought on by the care of thousands of homeless waifs. Unexpected interruptions are quite usual. It's always the right time for a kiss and a bit of motherly affection. It takes 18 years to produce a fine young man like this. God's call is upon his life. Mama Lillian gives him a Bible, motherly advice, and a kiss as he leaves for Bible school. Dear Lord, watch over that boy and keep him true to you. One of the burdens of Philip Crouch is that the older boys shall be saved and established before they finish high school and leave the Christian atmosphere of the home at 18 to go out and seek their life careers. Bible training and prayer are carefully practiced. Excellent material here for teachers, doctors and preachers, for evangelists to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to their own people and nation. These are the unwanted ones, homeless orphans for whom no man cared. God raised up a mother with a great heart to bring these useless lives hope and opportunity. Weeks, months, and years of hard work, of sweat and tears, of heartache and urgent prayer. Was the task really worthwhile? The children of my life. All that I have, all that I am, is invested in their lives. And I hope that they, in turn, will be a great blessing to their country where it's so badly needed. I wish you could see the great change that's being wrought today in the lives of those children whom you have helped me to support and care for. An orphanage youth, scarcely more than a boy, takes Christ to the villages. Working as a teacher, he tells the children the way of salvation through faith in the Son of God. The fathers of the village listen in as the young man speaks. Many orphanage preachers and teachers work under the able direction of Florence Christie. These young men, once orphans, with little hope or opportunity, are now preaching in the villages. Many have their own churches and large congregations. Living trophies of God's grace. These men preach Christ today because Lillian Trasher cared enough to come to Egypt. Because God cared. Because you cared and gave and sacrificed to give them a chance. This man came to the orphanage years ago, a homeless, bewildered boy. Today he is a successful pastor with his own church and alert to give the gospel to all who will listen. One of the most loved and most active of the young men who left the orphanage to preach the gospel, this man works in the villages. His message is clear and true. Many are hungering for the word of God and he has a grateful and attentive audience as he calls men to faith in Jesus Christ. This orphanage boy is only a youth, but God has made him teacher and preacher to one entire village. With pictures and words, he tells them of the living Christ, of God's love and grace to help all who believe. The message of the cross, the cleansing blood, life everlasting. This inspired young man is doing one of the best works along the River Nile and is supervised by Florence Christie. Today, Miss Trasher is not just one missionary. She is preaching Christ through the lives of some 8,000 boys and girls who have fed at her table and learned of God's love and power. Because one young man came to this village with a gospel, the whole town goes to church 
everybody, saved or unsaved. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. In this village at the edge of the desert, children stage a joyous parade, and no wonder. They have a school and a teacher, a chance to learn, as their feet start on a pathway that leads to happiness with God. Drawing water from an ancient well, village mothers take new hope today. Their children shall have a better life than their parents have ever known. A very nice new school building at Tata in Upper Egypt and a throng of busy, happy little children. Orphanage teachers have helped in this project also. These are children from the better class Egyptian homes, dressed in their pretty uniforms. These have the luxury of a carriage ride home, carefully loaded under the watchful eyes of school director, Carlene Burt. From good families, these children are also very grateful for this school, and their parents are being reached with the gospel of Christ. Many are the villages where they have no school, no chance to learn to read or write, no chance to learn of Christ. Many are waiting for an orphanage boy to come and tell them of Jesus. Hearts in these villages today are open, waiting for the message of life. Will you go and tell them? With many children, the future is not viewed through rose-colored glasses. Many have urgent needs for soul and body. When tragedy strikes, other young and helpless children will be wending their way to the gates of the orphanage. What a contrast for these fortunate ones who have found a home and loving care at the great house of hope and refuge that God built beside the River Nile. Here are tender young lives, little ones from the villages, from the desert, from the east and from the west, from the four corners of Egypt, from everywhere, they continue to bring the little ones to Jesus. All who help the orphanage care for such as these are laying up treasure in heaven, and someday they will hear the Lord Jesus say, I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. home and love can make up for a lot of things. This brave little fellow is preparing for a life of usefulness to God and to his people, recipient of heavenly grace. In all the orphanage, there is no group more grateful than those that are hopelessly blind, walking in perpetual darkness just to hear them singing the praises of God would melt the hardest heart. Chained to darkness by sightless eyes, these fortunate ones have found the true light that shines from the throne of God. The Lord Jesus had compassion on the blind. He gave Lillian Trasher compassion on the blind that they might know his care and his love. Hungry hands seeking out the words of Jesus who said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light.
your gifts to the orphanage help to care for these and to put the word of God in their hearts. This is the way they come, weeping, broken, in tears, seeking solace and comfort from one who really cares. For Lillian Trasher, this is an old and familiar story of heartache and sorrow and fear. She has given a helping hand to thousands, kindness and understanding in the hour of desperate need. She has listened with compassion as the whole sad story has poured forth from the hearts of weary pilgrims who have found their way to the orphanage door. The Bible makes plain that pure religion before God includes this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Whole villages have waited too long. Today they throng the roadways of life without knowledge of Christ. Who will go to bear them the message of hope before it is too late? Would you share your hope of salvation with this young girl and her brother? Would you reach out your hand just now and give this boy a chance for life? It is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. This is my story, and may it bring a vision of glorious opportunity to everyone who wishes to make something real of their lives. Young people, give your heart to Jesus Christ and begin today the most glorious adventure that anyone can know. To each of you who have helped me take care of these children, I wish to thank you from the very depths of my heart. With your help, we can continue to salvage the children of Egypt. For 45 years, I've tried to obey the call of God to mother the children he gave me. But now, I need your help to reach those who are still without hope and without Christ. Nobody cares for me. Nobody cares. Nobody. Nobody. But that's not true. It's not true. God cares. God cares for everyone. Call upon him. Do you care? Do you really care? Yes, I believe you do care. I believe you care. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. God bless you.